to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone um, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this is our second webinar in our Cops and Capitalism series, um, with, which we're partnering uh, with Little Sis on. So we're really excited um, to have you all for this one. Uh, my name is Alex Goodwin. Um, I use she and her pronouns and I'm near Chicago. Um, and I'm a senior organizer at Action Center on Race and the Economy. Hey everybody, my name is Britt. I use she, her pronouns. I'm based in Philly and I am a senior researcher with Acre Action Center on Race and the Economy. Um, and you'll see we've got a, a few other folks um, on the sort of webinar panel with us. These are other folks at Acre. Um, Jason, Tia, Kim, Carrie, and Tracy um, and Sophia. So they're gonna be uh, supporting us through some of the activities that we have later on, um, answering questions in the chat um, and really just like, you know, hold, holding down the back end for us. Um, and so uh, I think with that, we can go ahead and get started. Um, can you go to the first slide, please? Uh, so Acre is a research and organizing hub that focuses on the ways that Wall Street is intentionally extractive from historically marginalized communities. Um, and so that is extracted from black communities, brown communities, poor folks, LB LGBTQ folks, um, houseless folks, pretty much anyone who is not white, not rich, not straight, um, or not a man. Um, capitalism has, has been working against these folks. And so I, um, in particular at Acre, work on the relationship between policing and Wall Street, and Brittany researches how Wall Street and corporate actors siphon money from our public resources. And so in this uh, movement moment where many cities are calling for the defunding of police, we wanted this cops, our Cops and Capitalism webinar series um, to look at the ways that corporations and finance sustain policing, and then the way policing in turn sustains corporation and finance, essentially, um, the muscle or upholding uh, capitalism. And so I also just want to take a second to shout out Little Sis, um, who again, we are partnering with on this webinar. Uh, Little Sis's work is focused on power mapping the corporate elite. Um, it's really cool. Uh, it provides a lot of great insight um, for campaigns and narratives and for us to sort of like get, get an idea of, what, of who um, is in the power structure. Because I think sometimes we get really caught up in what the power structure looks like. And Little Sisters work gives us an opportunity to actually um, see who those folks are. And so, um, you know, I just encourage folks to check out their work um, when you have the chance. Uh, okay, so just a couple of notes on housekeeping. Uh, we do encourage y'all to use the chat, uh, ask questions. Uh, we have folks who will be watching the chat and helping to answer questions. And then Brittany and I, who will be doing most of the facilitation today, please feel comfortable in asking Brittany and I to slow down or repeat or define or clarify anything. Uh, you know, we're, we're happy to do that. Uh, and then on agenda, just a note on agenda, we're planning to use up to two hours of your time. We, I, we don't think we'll hit the full two hours, but we do wanna leave cushion in there for folks to have questions or ask questions and like us to dig into some of those answers. Um, and so we'll, you know, front load the beginning of this webinar with about 40 minutes on like background and analysis of this moment and um, of, the stuff, of the like system that we're talking about. And then um, we'll do about an hour for training. Uh, we want to make sure that like, you know, we provide our analysis and language to help y'all talk about the relationship of corporations and policing um, and then give you the tools to also help find these connections for yourself um, in your city. Uh, so hopefully folks are okay with that. If you're not, if there's any like glaring absolutely no's, uh, please drop those in the chat and we will do a whole new webinar for you. Just kidding, we will not, <laughs> we will not. <laughs> um, okay, so to get us grounded into, in today's webinar, um, I would invite everyone to take a minute and drop one word or feeling that comes to mind when you think about policing and finance or policing and corporations. Go. And if folks on staff wanna drop their uh, words 
to, oh, I saw a love story. That is a really interesting way to think about this. Bloated, upholding white dominance, confusing. Um, I'm really glad that somebody said confusing because um, hopefully uh, today with this webinar series in general, we can break down some of those pieces that are intentionally confusing for us. Um, you know, they do this on purpose so that they continue to, you know, stay in power and, and keep things going their way. Exploitative, extractive, inhumane, codependent, unholy, and separate. These are all great, uh, great words. They feed off each other. Thanks, y'all, um, for dropping those things in the chat. And these are all like very valid. Um, you know, we feel these words because of the history that we have with these institutions. And, you know, many of the words that y'all shared are, you know, what led folks to demanding in this moment that we defund the police. Um, next slide, please. And so, you know, for some, the demand to defund the police came as a surprise um, or a shock, something that they just could not imagine <laughs> or, or wrap their minds around. Um, but for many of us, uh, myself included, uh, many of us on this call and folks that have been in the streets, you know, this demand to defund was inevitable. Um, we are, I think, at a, at a crossroads or a turning point where um, we talk a lot about, like, with the pandemic going back to normal, we are pretty much at a point where we can't go back to normal if we're being honest about what normal uh, really was. And so, again, like, this demand to defund the police we see as one solution that would delegitimize and take power and authority away from law enforcement. Uh, that is the ultimate goal. Uh, next slide, please. And so let's take a second to look at the ways that police have amassed this power and authority, you know, in the first place. If you would have asked me this question like five years ago, where do police get their power? These are some of the things I would have said. I would have said media, I would have said, you know, racist governments, the war on drugs, mass incarceration. Um, and that was sort of the, you know, me in particular, that was like my extent of the understanding of like power. Um, but, you know, and, and also I want to say like all of these things are still very true and still very right. <laughs> uh, they definitely lend power to, to policing. Um, but now, um, here, if you could just click on the slide. Um, if you were to ask me that question, I would include these things. I would include an expansion of corporate power, uh, the growth of the finance industry and debt and austerity budget. Uh, because when I include these things, and hopefully, you know, what y'all will take away from today's training is when we include these things in the ways that we're talking about this, um, now we're not just calling on elected officials to take accountability for police brutality we can actually expand our targets, right? Now we get to call on the rich, the corporate CEOs that drain resources from our communities um, and that influence our elected officials behind closed doors. And that is, you know, also what leads to putting more police in our neighborhood. These are the people that will often go unnoticed um, and avoid accountability for their role in the history of police violence. Uh, we know that so many like CEOs and executives and managers, they like make their money off of us, literally, and then go live their lives in the background. Uh, you know, while folks out here, we're literally out here dying. Um, and, but, you know, we might get like a very cute Black Lives Matter advertisement <laughs> when, when the moment uh, demands it. So uh, also on this slide, um, austerity budgets, I just want to take a second to to define austerity for us. Um, and that is when a government uses budget and spending cuts um, and regressive tax increases in the name of like fiscal responsibility. And essentially what this does or what this means is that it forces, austerity budgets force poor and black and brown communities to carry the financial burden. Um, and so, you know, we're thinking about how corporations and the finance industry fit into this picture uh, we'll start to see a cycle or a circle that influences and creates these budgets. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, so this is a, a beautiful <laughs> illustration of this like cycle um, that I started to speak to. Uh, you know, corporations and banks, they're up here at the top 
um, of the slide, they will drain our budget and load us up with debt. Uh, if you owe like $300 on a credit card or a student loan, that's $300 that you can't or might not use on groceries or you know whatever health necessities you might have. And the same goes for local government. Um, because our cities and us as individuals are loaded up with debt, that's less money for public goods, um, which may create, which you know, creates conditions of overall poor neighborhoods that might not have grocery stores, but they definitely have police. Um, and you know, when there's higher police presence, that means, um, you know, that means higher risk of police violence and incarceration. Two things again that will take more money out of our budgets and provisions for public services. And so if, again, you know, if there isn't a ton of money for the city to contribute um, to public schools or public water and gas or housing, um, then, you know, the corporations will step right in with the solution um, and we are back up at the top of this circle or this cycle all over again. Uh, you know, this is an example. This is how we see the role of corporations and banks. Um, in supporting police violence. I'm just gonna pause because I think I might be having some internet troubles. No, if we're good, can I just feel like, oh, maybe Jason is having, okay. Can I get a thumbs up? Am I good? Okay, cool, thank you. Um, so, you know, this is how we see the role of corporations and banks in supporting police violence. Uh, they, create, they create these conditions. And as a result, local, state, and federal governments will pour billions into local policing, ICE, FBI, SWAT, DEA, surveillance technology, counterterrorism. Um, and, you know, something that a lot of people don't know is many cities will have these like fusion hubs in which there is law enforcement from every level here in their city, in their neighborhood. Um, and those hubs alone cost millions of dollars to, to maintain. And this is all while our public resources are suffering. Like they will literally have these like state of the art surveillance hubs. And folks are like, can we just get better, <laughs> better housing, better schools? Um, and so uh, can we go to the next slide please? So Acre has put a list together. These are the banks and corporations that we have called out um, in a lot of our research and know um, that our partners too have called out in their research and their campaigns. Um, and these are the repeat offenders. And we found them in many instances, um, profiting and sustaining policing and profiting from our public services and encouraging more debt. Um, which brings us to financialization. Sorry, my co-facilitators um, are here. <laughs> they are two and seven. Um, Oh, yeah, these are the folks that we know um, encourage more debt and essentially um, are the ones profiting, the ones that would be at the top of that chart. Um, and that brings us into financialization. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? To put it shortly, um, you know, we have this like ugly word and this ugly definition. Uh, but to put it shortly, this is the expansion of the finance industry into every part of our lives. Many of the banks that you saw on those on that last slide, those are consumer lenders. So you might have a checking account, a credit card, maybe a loan with them as an individual, but they also have an investment arm or a private equity arm um, or a real estate arm, or they support private prisons, like or, 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 right? So we think I have my credit card with these folks and that is only a drop in the bucket and like where they actually make a lot of their money. Um, and so these banks and corporations have managed to expand and make profit through so many different parts of our lives. Um, and so I'm just gonna pause here and give folks a minute to read through the definition on this slide. Okay, um, and I'm just gonna read the highlights because I feel like these uh, get at uh, maybe the 
I don't want to say more important because it's all really important, but I think they more clo like closely define what we're talking about. So financialization is the expansion of the finance industry's influence into our everyday lives through private ownership, debt, and control over industries and services. These institutions exploit our basic needs, such as housing, education, labor, health, and even water to create opportunities for the, their extreme profit. And so I want to bring us into another activity in the chat. Uh, let's see if we can use um, two minutes to drop as many examples as we can in the chat of what this looks like in our real life and our in our real experiences. And then, you know, we'll take a second to describe how those things enable more policing. So um, folks can start dropping their examples in, cost of housing, mortgage foreclosures. Yep, um, I would say corporate landlords is an example, predatory lending, student loans, our favorite, not really, not our favorite. Privatization of water, absolutely. Medical debt, yes the entire collections industry. Mm -hmm. Privatizing schools, uh-huh. Um, rent eviction, stagnant wages, and record profit. Yep, uh, yep, somebody brought up the, the bailout of 2008. Municipal bonds, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, mm -hmm. oh, Ticket fines and fees, yes. Great, so um, yeah, so a lot of y'all are familiar with what this looks like in real life. Um, this definition again is just to like share our analysis and like share language towards the things that we know and experience. As somebody pointed out earlier, in the chat in the very beginning, like this stuff is, is confusing and it's intentionally confusing. Um, so that, you know, cause it, it, and if we don't have, us having the language gives us more opportunity um, to, camp to campaign. Um, okay, so what we see again, when our cities don't have enough money for quality public resources we, like that we need um, then that will create the opportunity again for corporations to fill that void through the privatization of um, our public services. And those austerity budgets, again, um, drive the expansion of finance and corporations into our services, bringing them more profit and putting more financial strain on us. And um, we know that, or have seen, governments often think that the solution to poverty um, is policing. And so these things uh, go hand in hand. And this is again, like how we see that they sustain each other. Um, and it's been this way for decades, um, if not centuries, right? Communities of color, LGBTQ people, poor people, non-white, not straight, not men. Um, we are the folks that have been intentionally starved out of the resources that we need. Um, and coronavirus is exposing just how deeply fractured this system has been, or it is, right? As cities and states face budget shortfalls um, because of working people's inability to pay taxes uh, or spend money, then it becomes clear who truly makes our economy run. Um, and it makes it clear who contributes and who doesn't. Can we go to the next slide, please? So we, right, the rich and the, these corporations, they don't pay their fair share and we get left to shoulder the burden. A great example is how corporations are getting or have gotten billions of dollars, like again, another bailout. And we got $1,200 one time a couple months ago. And we don't, we don't know, there's uncertainty as if we're, if we're actually going to get any more support than that. Um, these are the conditions, the perfect conditions almost I, if there's, if there was a perfect condition, right, for an uprising, we are in a public health crisis where our healthcare system is not prepared to handle it, our economy is not prepared to handle it, and to top it off, the police were given more power to abuse and harm and harass and kill people. Like, of course, shit is going to get set on fire. Uh, like, th these are, we have right and room to be rageful right now. Um, 
And so as we move on to talk more about budgets and think about, I, like I want us to think about the, the chart, the circle or the cycle um, and the roles that corporations play and then how budgets create conditions for, for over-policing. Um, and so I'm going to pause here again. Um, I know we've done a lot of framing and defining, really trying to like set the scene. And I just want to know, um, you can drop it in the chat, you know, where, how this lands for you um, and if folks have any questions. Angry. Yep. Yes. Okay. Well, I am going to assume, um, since there's not a whole lot of action in the chat right now, um, that folks are good. But again, feel free to ask questions throughout. If we need to double back on something, just let us know. Um, I also, uh, okay, so somebody just put that um, this feels overwhelming. And I appreciate you saying that. I want to um, add that, yes, it is and can be very overwhelming. Um, and with this series in particular, like a lot of our webinars have like this framing and analysis, but we are also then doing a training. And so we want to make sure that y'all get to walk away with some tools and, and some skills so that we can start um, chipping away uh, at this system. And so, you know, again, why I appreciate the folks feeling overwhelmed. I think we all have been there and still sometimes feel that way, um, even, even when it looks like we're winning. But um, yeah, hopefully that by the end of this, you don't feel as overwhelmed. Um, hopefully you feel more ready to, um, ready to rebuild um, what we're working on. And so with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Brittany to talk more about public budget. Great, thank you. And hopefully we also um, are able to really channel those feelings into something that looks structured in a campaign or where you can identify people to fight back and that always feels good to me. Uh, so if we could go to the next slide. So budgets are political tools and some refer to them as moral documents because they put into action the priority of our elected officials. And these decisions are not made in a vacuum. Political contributions, lobbying dollars are spent to influence the outcome of our city budget. So some of that money may come from residents, community-based organizations like the kinds that we belong to, but a lot of the larger do uh, donations or contributions come from corporations who want to see their interest in local politics and policies. And these structures are built into budgets and laws to make room for austerity and limit funding to our communities. Next slide, please. Budget cuts make working families and people responsible for service costs. So maybe your taxes went down, but what you pay out of pocket goes up. And maybe your taxes actually didn't go down, right? Um, and so, for example, cost is a top barrier for families looking for childcare, and the government does not subsidize childcare at the rate that families need. So parents end up paying a lot more than they would if they had assistance. Next slide. Austerity also creates a gap that Alex mentioned earlier, and that gap allows Wall Street to come in and fill it through privatization of our goods and services. We saw this type of disaster capitalism model used in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. In less than three years, the city was moving toward an all charter school system, and now the entire district is charter. So at Acre, we do believe that these corporations and Wall Street, they target marginalized communities and identities through the process of financialization that you all identified earlier. Next slide. And budgets assist in this financialization process. They reinforce racist, uh, racist and misogynistic policymaking by painting working families and mothers, especially in families of color, as drains on our budget because we use public services. Even though we know that corporations are the true drain. We've seen this through terminology, and I saw somebody mention this in the chat, um, but terminology like the welfare queens made popular by Reagan, it also places a heavy emphasis on this idea of an ideal taxpayer. So someone who's not relying on government and more closely aligned with the interests of rich property owners, often white men. But these same overwhelmingly white men don't pay their fair share in taxes. 
They use tax subsidies, abatement, grants, things that just sound like socialism for the rich to me. And it shows us that corporations and wealthy have, and the wealthy have successfully pushed the government into their corner, and they shape this narrative. Next slide. So taxes on the rich have plummeted, and the federal government continues to throw crumbs at our city and state budgets. Corporations and the rich, they are really the real looters of our community. They use power to starve us of the services we need and employ regressive taxes and services like policing. So if you look at this graph, 70 years ago, the ultra wealthy were taxed at nearly 70%. And now that is actually closer to 20%. If you could go to the next slide. Great. And this doesn't mean that our cities are powerless. It means that they need to do more to tax the rich. So in this slide, we see that there were a lot of federal cuts for the rich. Cities and states, we can take that money and use it. Next slide, please. And we don't want to fall further into this trap of subsidies, privatization attempts, other corporate economic development policies that fail to serve the majority of us. Next slide. And the money is out there, so we need to take it or just tax it. Um, so I'll pause for a couple seconds for people to just check out this slide, and it just shows how wealth has ballooned in the last 30 years. And sure, we can do that. Carrie, would you mind really quickly just going back to the um, to the daycare or child care slide? One more. Great. And I think what's important to see is that the people who see cost as a barrier are making less than $100,000, right? So everybody is not struggling to pay. It's the people who need it the most who are in need of subsidies, who are not able to um, use the child care because they're not getting subsidized. All right, and I'm gonna just ask us to go back to the slide for the ballooned wealth. One more. Cool. Um, so this is a huge increase in the last 30 years. Next slide. I am a fan of Beyonce. So that would take 1,100 Beyonce to fill that gap, okay? And, and that's just not realistic. Um, but since the start of the virus, uh, the top billionaire's wealth has increased by $565 billion. So all jokes aside, whether or not it's Beyonce, that wealth needs to be tapped. It needs to be redistributed to the services and programs that are historically underfunded, but most needed in our community. Next slide. Instead, what we've seen is just an increase for policing, for prisons, and we see that that crime really did start at Nixon's racist war on drugs. So even with the small dip that you see in later years, the gap between social services and policing, it remains stark. Next slide. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a quick quiz and you can just throw your answers into the chat and I will read, um, read these out. So the first question is the city of, uh, or where did, uh, where did the city spend their money? So number one, the city of San Diego spent more money on A, the Office of Race Equity, B, the police department, or C, the fire department. Number two, true or false? In Minneapolis, they spent 40 times more on the Civil Rights Department than the Police Department. Number three, true or false? In Philly, the top two expenses were policing and Wall Street payments. All right, I'm going to just scroll through the chat really quick. Man, I thought I was going to get y'all with number two, but I guess I didn't. 
All right, so um, Carrie, can you go to the next slide, please? Let's just go ahead and check our answers. All right, so you guys got most of the answers right. I think I might have tricked a couple people with number two. Um, but number one, city of San Diego spent more on the police department. Number two is false. In Minneapolis, they actually spent 40 times more on the police department than the civil rights department. And number three is true. In Philly, the top two expenses were policing and Wall Street. So you guys got the numbers pretty much correct. But I do want to highlight Minneapolis for a second. These entrenched systems of disinvestment, along with the senseless murder of Black folks like George Floyd, it forced people into the streets. So I do think that it's a, a, a beacon of hope to see that this city is on a journey toward a more reparative and a more restorative system. But I want to highlight that even before we, did, we dig into any of these documents, we knew how cities spent their money. And we knew how they spent their money because we can feel the impact of their unwavering decision to police us instead of provide for us. Next slide, please. So this just shows that our budgets are not just. A just budget raises progressive revenue, taxes on the rich, corporations, among other things, and cuts to regressive expenses. That's policing, payments to privatizers, payments to Wall Street. Um, and we can go to the next slide. As extractive and as exploitative as they are, cities do rely on Wall Street for their debt. This, uh, this slide shows out of all costs that cities are obligated or mandated to pay each year, how much is going to Wall Street through debt payments or debt service. And I'm going to pause for a second. We'll walk through this a little bit, but just check out. I don't know where folks are from on the call, so you all may see a city that jumps out to you. Next slide. So cities pay Wall Street in the form of debt service. That's the principal payment plus the interest payment plus fees. And those fees are just the cost of doing business with Wall Street. So if you're a homeowner, this may be similar to how your mortgage is broken down. Just imagine if the cost of the realtor services were crazy expensive and folded in for very little work. So Wall Street makes their money through fees, through interest payments, and I really do encourage you all to um, check out our last training, and we're also having an in-depth bond training in September, so we'll make sure to send that information around, too, if you're interested in municipal debt and bonds a bit more deeply. Next slide, please. So this debt funds our community infrastructure at its best. Schools, water systems, and libraries, and other long-term expenses that governments can pay over time. And that's just instead of paying some huge lump sum amount up front, while cities have the money, they often just want to be able to pay that over the time, um, over time because that money is coming in over time. Regardless, I think it's fair to say we just don't want Wall Street to profit off of our community services. So ideally, we would have a no-cost public option like public bank that we could use to take out debt. Next slide, please. then we don't have to pay Wall Street, right? And we can avoid the toxic debt, uh, the debt deal that often trap our cities. So this slide just quickly highlights some of the toxic predatory debt deals that Acre has done research on. We'd be happy to send resources if people are interested in any in particular. Um, but these type of deals often trap our cities and force them to pay extreme payments to Wall Street, taking money away from what could be used by services. Next slide, please. And this idea of public banking it is possible. It already exists to some extent at a federal level. So while it took a pandemic, the Federal Reserve, that's the U.S.'s central bank, it does have the power to lend directly to cities and states for free over time. And that's not what it's doing right now, but that's what we need it to do. And so then we would really be able to completely divest from Wall Street and have a public option for free that cities and states could rely on for debt. Next slide. So 
one of the many reasons that we want to divest from Wall Street is because the money is toxic with harmful strings attached. First, Wall Street makes sure that they get their money back because cities are mandated to pay Wall Street back before they pay for any of our um, goods and services. And not only do taxpayer dollars pay off Wall Street, but we often use fines and fees to pay that back. And those fines and fees, they criminalize poor people, criminalize black and brown people, they criminalize people on the margins, and they trap us in a system that's too expensive, it's too punitive for us to get out of. It's also important for us to highlight these same Wall Street banks that siphon money away from our budgets also uphold this carceral system by financially backing police foundations. And that's what you see on this slide right here. And our next training after this one, we'll actually dig more into this with the Little Sis researchers. So another shout out to them. Um, but let's just take a second and we can look and we see um, Wells Fargo, which I know is a huge player in Philly, Bank of America, um, that SunTrust, right? And people will be able to identify who those people are in their, um, in their cities or states. Next slide. So I just want to bring us back to Alice's financialization slide. I think it's a really great one. And I appreciated somebody writing that it is overwhelming. What I took away from this is it's completely chaotic. It's chaotic to be trapped in this type of system. People can't be expect, um, expected to thrive in a system where there is no wiggle room, it's punitive, and there's absolutely no room for abundance. City budgets, they provide an opportunity for us to shift how we experience cities and how we experience our lives. It's our job to fight for that and fight for what we need and resist these efforts to continue to just take and take from us. So I'll pass it on to Alex so we can provide some context on how this informs campaign. Thank you, Brittany, for all that context. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Oh, wait. There's a couple more slides. One more? This one. Thank you. Uh, back one more. Um, thank you. Uh, so I just want to bring us back to the slide before we get into the training um, half of this. I, um, when I first put this slide together and then I took a step back and looked at it, I was like, it was one of those like mind blowing moments. Like I can't even fathom the amount of money that is just represented in the logos, like on this slide. Um, you know, and that is money that they've made off of centuries of racism and violence against communities of color and poor people. Um, and so, as I mentioned earlier, we have the opportunity now to expand our targets and calls to defund the police uh, by thinking about the ways that the rich and wealthy and big corporations are also implicated in the history of police violence. Uh, because of their money, um, they've made ma they have massive influence over our budgets. They encourage cities to take resources from us while they continue to grow their own profits through debt and privatization. Um, and capitalism is their game. This is like monopoly money to them. Um, and we are, unfortunately, we are losing. Um, instead of quality public goods, we get over -pleat. Um So I, can we go to the next slide, please? I, I want to name that, you know, defunding the police is absolutely 100% a step towards the resources that our communities need. Um, and we also need to, like, you know, we also need massive investments in our communities, like centuries worth of investments in our communities. Um, and that's gonna come from like the firms that are that are on that slide um, and the ones like them. And so this, um, this image here, this is uh, probably one of my favorite images around um, like organizing. Um, and so, I just I wanted to share this with you all because it often inspires me um, when I need a little reset to think about like what what we're trying to do here. Uh, and so with that, we we want to use this time now to build out our skills um, and you know create our own game so that we have access to the lives that we all deserve to live. Because um, yeah, monopoly is just not it's not cutting it anymore. Um, so I'm gonna pass it back to Britt who is going to get us into our budgets and campaigning training. 
great. And I'm not sure, Alice, if you, yep. Go ahead, Tracy, take it away. Yes, we had a couple questions um, in the chat. Um, one of them was, um, can we talk about how Google and Amazon fit into this system? Um, so it'd be great if you could speak to that. And then there was another one specifically asking about if there's an evidence that Wall Street is keeping track of municipal bond payments better than it keeps track of subprime mortgage payments. So I can take a stab at the Google and Amazon ones. Um, I think, yeah, so, so when I think about why we include Google and Amazon in this conversation, it's about expansion um, for me and like size, uh, you know, in the same way that like banks um, or financial institutions will have their hands in all of these different pots and they've just like grown and amassed in size. As a result, Google and Amazon have done the same thing. Um, they have expanded what they offer and have found just so many ways to continue to profit off of, um, off of us directly and off of like violence and oppression of our communities. I think um, uh, Amazon, you know, we typically know Amazon as like a marketplace, an online marketplace. Um, and Amazon also has um, Amazon Web Services, where they support like the um, digital or online businesses, but also support um, like surveillance technology. They create and support surveillance technology uh, for local police departments and the federal government, and that includes ICE, right? Like it's managed, it's not just like, oh, I need to buy uh, some you know crayons off of Amazon. I need to get these books. They're cheaper on Amazon. Uh, Amazon is is not just like the bookseller anymore, right? It is also this like arm of of really violent policing um, and extraction. And uh, Google um, is similar in many ways. Great. And I will. I think that came from Heather. Was the second question. I can't fully answer that question. I'm not sure how um, Wall Street keeps track of the payment. I would love to be a fly on the wall, um, but I, I can say that our cities keep sending the payments, right? And we make those payments on time every month when we cannot fund the things that we need. And I mean, even in this emergency, this, this state of emergency, we are paying Wall Street back. Cities and states are mandated to pay these banks back. Um, but I honestly think that it's time for us to really reconsider us paying them back um, and coming up with an option that is free and public um, so that we don't have to make these payments to Wall Street anymore. Great. So, Alex, if you're good, I'm going to transition us into the budget. All righty. So, I'm going to drop this link one more time. And this is just a how-to guide that we created for folks. Um, and I will stop one second and just answer this question. Isn't, it, isn't the paying back of debt important, important because of their mooting uh, rating? Yes, credit rating agencies, they're the ultimate scam too, right? Like this is just one big scam that cities are trapped in. And if we could put that into that circle and cycle that Alice created, we would throw that in there too. It creates this tension where if you were to move in one direction, you get pulled back in another direction. And either way, you're left not having what you need. So yes, it is true that they have to pay back so that they can play into this game that the credit rating agencies have also created in municipal finance. Um, all right. so. I just threw a link into the doc, and that is a how-to guide. So if folks could just write into the, um, the chat, like, yes, I got the link, it worked, give me an okay so that I can um, keep moving. Great, great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, good people. Let me try to share my screen. This is where I get technically challenged. Okay. 
All right. And I just want to make sure that everybody can see my screen. So if folks can just give me another okay. Yes, I can see your screen. You should see how to dig into your city's budget and the city of Philadelphia operating budget. Perfect. Great. All right, so what we provided for everybody is a step-by-step -step guide on a few different things. So the first one is how to dig into your city's budget. The sec second one is to look at tax subsidy amount. So if you want to find the total number of how much revenue should have been going to your city, but went to corporations instead, there's a how-to guide for that. And the last one is to ID bad actors and their Wall Street backers or their Wall Street investors. So for this one, we're going to be looking at the city budget and also identifying bad actors. Then you'll have some time on your own to choose your own adventure, aka your own scenario. And then you'll be able to hop into these breakout groups and walk through these skills on your own, but with some facilitation from me, Alex, and Sophia. All right. So we're going to start with digging into a city budget. Very excited. I get to nerd out. Keep on staff when they front of me for it. All right. So I'm sharing my screen, but feel free to follow along on the how-to guide, whatever works well for you and whatever works for how you learn. So once you're in the how-to uh, document, you can go ahead and click on how to dig into your city budget. So if I'm on this page, I can click here, boom, it takes me to how to dig into your city budget. So we're going to focus on um, Philadelphia for this, and that's because I'm from Philly, so shout out to people from Philly who are on the call. All right, so um, a city budget is a plan of expected income and spending for the upcoming fiscal year. So this may or may not be from the same, uh, be the same as the calendar year, but you should figure that out because you want to make sure that you can appropriately participate in the budget process. So each city has two budgets. One is the operating budget and one is the capital budget. They're all folded into the same package, but they distinguish between the two. So the operating budget, it shows the current spending um, and upcoming spending. And it usually focuses um, on those, but it also will include some past spending amounts. The capital budget, that second piece, uh, shows plans for long-term infrastructure improvement, facilities, and equipment. We're not focusing on that today, but if you are looking for police technology, equipment, it may actually be tucked away in that capital budget. So you all should definitely look at it. It's just not the focus of this training. And sometimes cities will combine the two. Usually they're separate. I like when they're um, separate, so I'm glad that Philly does separate the two. The other important thing to note about budgets is that they're made up of different funds. This is where money comes into the city and gets dumped into. So this is where revenue comes in, they dump it into a fund. We're only gonna focus on the operating budget and the general fund. And the reason we're focusing on the general fund is because that's usually the largest bucket of money and what city councils are most focused on. And that's where we as people, as residents, as organizers, we have the most power to influence how that money is spent. So just put that in your brain, put a little pin there, operating budget, general fund budget, as you move into your scenarios. All right. So we're going to move over now into the house you guys. Great. So sorry that my eyes are shifted. I am definitely a nerd and I have too many screens. So we're going to look um, at Philadelphia's general fund operating budget. And then we're going to try to find what percentage of that general fund budget is dedicated to the police department. It's also important to note this is not a total cost of policing, right? We know that people hide policing in different parts of our budget. This is just the easiest for this training. So we're going to focus on the police department budget. But we got some pro tips in there for um, searching through the budget. So hopefully that helps you when you're looking for other costs. Great. So the first thing that I'm going to do is Google Philadelphia and city budget. Feel free to walk through this with Philly um, as your example, just so you can practice along. 
And if just listening is enough and looking at the guide is enough, I would suggest you do that. All righty. So I'm going to Google, and I already have typed in Philadelphia City Budget. Well, let's go ahead and search that. Great. So I can scroll, 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 scroll. I know that the link that I am looking for is the third link on Google for me. That might not be the third uh, link on Google for you. If it's not, feel free to use the how-to guide and just click on that step one link. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Boom. And that takes me here. So we always want to look for the most up-to-date or recent adopted budget. Not the um, not just like any fiscal year. We want to make sure that we're looking for this current fiscal year and that it was adopted and improved. That means that it already went through a city uh, council budget. But if you're looking to fight, you might be looking for a proposed budget. And someone asked, why that one? Why not the first one? So if I look, um, I see that this says Mayor Nutter. Being from Philly, I know that Mayor Nutter isn't the current mayor. Kenny is. And so automatically, that's probably an old budget. And let's just go ahead and see if I'm right. This says proposed FY15. We're not in FY15, so we want to make sure that we're getting the most up-to-date one. But that's a good question. So I scrolled to the third link because I see that it's FY21. And I know that that is the most up-to-date and recent fiscal year. Cool. All right, so I went there to that third link, clicked on it, boom, it took me here. And that's City Council of Philadelphia, their budget center. This is going to look um, different for every city, but something along those terms should get you here. Another question said, why not enter the fiscal year to the Google search? I just did it, but you should feel free to. Sometimes what I want to do is like look at how people have spent over time sharing. So I might be looking for more than one fiscal year. But if that one works, you should actually do that too. Great. So I see adopted, which highlight again, we want the adopted version for this training, budget and brief. These documents, y'all, can be thousands of pages, okay? So we don't actually always want um, the full budget book. If a budget and brief is going to give us what we need, cool. We're going to use the city's budget and brief. So the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is click on that link. And just give me a yes. Good. I'm good, Britt. So I know that folks are now clicking that link and they have this FY21 budget and brief document pulled up. Okay, Annie said she got it. Right, the budget of brief is 114 pages. Yes. Yeah. And Kermit, it says you're from Philly, so I'm going to say that they are drawing with the amount of pages on this. All right. <laughs> okay. So I think folks are there. And what we have now is the city's budget and brief. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to um, the house, you guys. Boom, boom. And the first thing that I always do, no matter the city, is look at the table of contents. This just gives you an overview of exactly how they've laid out their budget. And you can probably find a lot of what you're looking for in this document, so you're not just scrolling, 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 scrolling. So I am going back to that pin that we put in our heads. We're looking for the operating budget. So let's just see. Cool, operating budget. And we're also looking for the general fund. So now I want to go ahead and start looking for general fund. Well, we see that everywhere, right? But what I do see is a summary table. Summary tables are great because they do what they say. They summarize in table format often what you're looking for, okay? So it says that the summary table of the operating budget, the general fund, is on page 19. So let's take a second and go to page 19. The PDF and the documents never line up, but we're going to page 19 in the actual PDF.
All right, now go ahead and just give me a got it, yes, following along in the chat so I know everybody is on page 19 of, um, of the budget, and this should say the City of Philadelphia Fiscal 2021 Operating Budget. Okay, any I don't know if I'm following. Okay. We'll leave room for questions too, Amy. Okay. So what we're looking at right here is a huge table that tells us all of the money that's getting dumped into the biggest pot. Right, and the biggest pot in most cities is called the general fund. So we have this general fund document, and Annie, I'm working through this for you. Um, so we have this big pot called the general fund, and we wanna just see exactly how much is in it. So this summary table that we're looking at, it is the summary of the general fund, okay? And when we go into our breakout groups, we can ask some direct questions about the budget. So I would encourage, People who are struggling with this to join one that actually has budget and um, has the budget in it so you can just struggle with it in the smaller group all right so i want to make sure i'm in the general fund check i also don't want to me uh, mess up and get the wrong fiscal year so i see fy 2021 boom and right here it says total revenue for the general fund that's all the money getting dumped in to the general fund and that number, if I just looked at it on its face, it looks like $4.5 million, right? So I just want to make sure people know, you go to the top of that screen right here, that's actually in thousands. So you add three zeros and your actual number is $4.5 billion. All right, so we are now on step six in the how-to guide, if people are following along in the how-to guide. All right, so we wanted to find the city's general fund total. We just found it, okay? It's the $4.5 billion number. So I just noted that right here, boom, all right? But that's not enough because we actually are looking for how much of this big sum is being spent on police. Now, I would be a lie if I said to y'all that I use the table of contents for this, right? So I'm gonna scroll back up to it. But really what I do y'all is just scroll to the top of the document. We know we're looking for police, boom. Okay, let's go ahead and just type in police. Now, there's 23 instances of them saying police. So we have to find the one that works for us. And what we're asking ourselves is of that total, the general fund, how much was spent on policing. So I'm gonna keep on going through here. Nope, nope, nope. This does give us a good overview. It's a good way to check your, your answers, um, but that's not what we're looking for. Nope, nope, boom. I am always looking for a summary table and yes, Thank you, Alex. Control find is how you do a search in your document. I am always looking for a summary table because these documents get extremely confusing. So I want one document that tells me everything I need to know. I don't wanna always look through every single thing that the department pays for. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I just want a top line item. If you're looking for a top line item, you're looking for a table. All right, so I see here that it says police, it has the general fund and it has our current year. So I'm gonna look over. I would be wrong if I stopped here, right? Because this is 2019. I'd be wrong if I stopped here because this is 2020. This is the column, that last column is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I found my total. 727 million is how much they spent on policing in this upcoming proposed um, or in this upcoming fiscal year. So I just want to go ahead and note that. And that is our answer. And if you look at my screen quickly, I just divided the police department budget 
by the total general fund number. And I got that the city of Philly spends 16% of its money from the general fund on policing. So that is, that's how you do it. I'm gonna stop and just ask for questions. Right, and look, you know, I do want to shout out Philly because there was, and you can see this in this document, a $22 million decrease from the police department budget that people worked really hard to get. And so while that's not what we want, that is not ideal, we have to fight. They're giving us crumbs in the middle of an uprising, right? We got to keep pushing to get what we want and to have budgets that don't look like this. So we just got to keep fighting it. But part of us fighting it is making sure that we have what we need to talk to the people in power and fight the people in power to give us what we want. And Shauna, yes, most cities do follow this type of format. So the general fund is not different than the operating budget. If we were to create a tier, there would be an operating budget and there would be a capital budget. Underneath these budgets are funds. And the funds just do exactly what you said. They fund the things that we need in our budget. So don't think about them separately. Thinking of, think about the general fund as a mechanism to fund the things or a vehicle to fund the things that we have in our city budget. The budget always have titles the same, so general fund. No. So Marco, okay. Um, in Chicago, it's, just, it's not actually called a general fund, it's called a corporate fund. Overwhelmingly, these funds are called general funds. Chicago is definitely called a corporate fund. It had to be difficult, Chicago. And I'm reading the comments. Hey, Britt. Yes. Some folks are like, do you have any kind of general um, tips for understanding the numbers and how, what we're looking at? Some folks are just like overwhelmed. Like I see a lot of like, what am I looking at? What is it? Yep. I would say for me, it's always helpful to look for this general fund number. There's lots of numbers in the budget. The general fund is the biggest bucket of money. So you're always looking for the general fund. Marcos, you would be looking for the corporate fund. And what that is going to do is just give you a breakdown of all of the things that your city spends money on. So if I was looking at it as a first step and maybe not trying to calculate a percentage, my first step would actually just be to look at the general fund budget and just see what's in there. So I'm just gonna take two more minutes out and I'll pass it back to you. But let's go ahead and look at something that's a lot easier to digest this stuff than what we just did. So I just taught you guys the harder way, but I think that there's a, a easier way to do it. And I'm gonna go to page 19. Boom. All right. So if I really just wanted to know what was in my budget and I didn't want to get technical, honestly, y'all, this is what I would look at. It's a big, uh, I almost cursed, but it's a very big <laughs> pie graph that just says, this is how the budget is broken down. Broken down. So we, we can just see what's in there, okay? So if I looked at this one, 4.8 um, is the number that we found in the summary table. Now let's look. We see 727 million for police, boom. That's the number that we just found by looking at the summary table. 220 million for prisons, that's another um, column. Other criminal justice, 237. So the reason that I think that it's important for us to know those skills of breaking it down, because what, what is other criminal justice, right? Like what exactly is that? So we can't always just rely on the over, um, the overview, we want to dig a little deeper sometimes. But these pie graphs and stuff like that, it is very, very easy to digest what's going into that big bucket of money. Okay. 
yes to answer Delaney's question and we have um we have a pool that we can drop into this um, chat but we definitely look we can look and see where policing is one of the highest expenditures I want to say it is a village how do personnel costs fit into this we're looking at the overview but personnel is funded by that overview so these costs are through personnel and I'm just gonna cut off questions for now so that we have time. Yes, yeah, Philly Power Research. So that we have time to um, to go to the next part of our training. Feel free to keep flooding me with questions. I will absolutely answer them in the chat, but I wanna make sure that we get um, the rest of the training out there too. Thank you all. Cool, thanks, Brittany. Um, that was great. Um, my first venture into budgets was two, three years ago when we started doing acres police brutality bonds research. And um, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in there. I, I think Brittany's training was really helpful and I would also encourage folks to just like spend some time scrolling and searching through your own city's budget to see, you know, what kind of things you find um, and what kind of questions you come up with to, to help you get more specific on what you're looking for. Uh, so I'm going to take us through like a really quick training um, on how to ID the bad actors and Wall Street backers in your uh, city or state. And so if y'all are still hopefully in the how to guide, um, I'm on page six. Um, and so if folks could just like give me a thumbs up or, ooh, or a yes in the chat that like you are on page six in the how to guide, and then I'm going to start sharing my Screen and get it moving. Okay. Okay. Cool. So hopefully folks can see my screen. If you can't, just start typing in all caps in the chat. <laughs> no, I know. Um, yep, you can have whatever you want right now, Harm. Okay. Cool. So um, this uh, first, there's this. Yeah. Isn't really amazing how kids only need help and want to talk to you when you're busy? Okay. Oops. There you go. All right. So um, this part is split into three pieces. Um, the first will take us through some steps for if you uh, don't have any idea where to start, who the Wall Street backers are, who the corporations are. Um, in your city or state. The second uh, set of steps will be for if you already have an idea of who that is and you want to um, you want to dig in there. And then lastly, we will uh, round this out looking into uh, like how you find the institutional holders or shareholders um, for these companies. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to click this link in our document, the Good Job First Subsidy Tracker. And um, again, this is for like, if you really don't have any idea or don't know where to start. Um, and I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, you'll see in option one, we have all of these different drop downs. I'm going to go right into the state drop down um, and we'll use Pennsylvania. Again, shout out Philly. And it'll do an automatic search for us. And this is what comes up. So these, this uh, page is going to show us a list of the top 10 parent companies and then um, like the individual companies that are receiving subsidies. And then at the top, we can actually see the total um, in subsidies that uh, these companies are getting out of the state. Um, so we're looking at a little over $5 billion um, in state resources that are going to support these corporations. Um, and so we'll just do like a slow scroll. Um, for those that are, you on, that are on my screen, uh, we can see who some of those folks are in Pennsylvania, uh, Merck, Walt Disney, Vanguard, um, Comcast, Volkswagen. Uh, and again, I'm just so broke, I could never fathom how much money <laughs> this actually is. I'm like, what would I do with over a billion dollars? Um, 
I mean, imagine what our communities could do with over a billion dollars with this $5 billion number, right? So um, again, I encourage y'all to uh, use this link again in the how-to guide. Um, it'll take you right to where I was. Do it for your own state. You can do it with me right now if you want or on your own time. Um, so yeah, these are just, these are some of the companies in Pennsylvania. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna pause first. Were there any questions on that? Um, the steps that I just walked through? I'm gonna take that as a no. All right, so we're just gonna scroll right down into part B. Again, this is for if you do have an idea already of who the bad actors are um, in your city or state that you wanna dig into. Um, so it's gonna take us right back into the tracker. And we'll scroll down. And now, um, rather than state, we're gonna go right into the parent companies drop down. And I'm gonna use Aramark. Uh, what is the alphabet? Yeah. Oh, there we are. Okay. So we're going to go into Aramark and we get to see more specifically what the value of their of the subsidies are that they're receiving. Um, and we can learn a little bit more um, about the company itself. One thing I want to add from the last set of steps is that um, if you're curious about uh, what those like, maybe what that looks like on a local level, right? We would suggest Googling the headquarters of those companies. So that gives you an idea, you know, for campaign or narrative purposes um, of where, what that looks like locally um, and how that might fit into some of your strategy. So um, Aramark here, we're looking at $11 million. That is a lot of money still. Um, and we'll also see um, around ownership structure that this is a publicly owned company. And so it's traded on the stock market. It has a ticker symbol. And um, that will help us now figure out um, looking into the shareholders um, of Aramark because they are profiting too. So I'm gonna go back into our how-to guide um, we just did the drop down company or drop down the company drop down. This is the screen we just saw. And then it takes us right into part B, finding Wall Street backers of publicly traded companies. So again, Aramark is our company. We know it's publicly traded. We're going to go into Yahoo Finance. And we can just type it in right up top. We are right here with it. Sorry, my computer's in the Special problems. Okay. So now that we're here, there's lots of numbers, there's lots of stock market things happening. I'm going to take us right into um, the holders tab. This is where, for me, for us who are thinking about this stuff, and I think a uh, campaign frame, this is where a lot of the interesting stuff is gonna be. So we see the top institutional holders in Aramark. Uh, Vanguard, well, oh, sorry, I'm not doing, <laughs> just doing a thing. Okay, so we see BlackRock, um, Vanguard, Wellington. I know BlackRock was on Acres, like list of bad actors on the slide that I shared with y'all. Um, and that has come up in our research a couple of times in other places, right? Um, and the reason that this is important uh, is because these are also folks that are making money and profiting off of Aramark's ability to uh, siphon our res siphon public resources into their own profit. Um, so uh, it is it is people who are who are also invested in this company. Um, and I, I think like not to get too deep into it, but like this is important because um, companies who have these like large investors are going to feel pressure to 
make money, make a return or create a return for their investors, right? And so the way that they're going to do that is they, the company itself needs to amass as much profit as it can so that there's enough profit for themselves and then there's enough, enough profit for the investors. And we talked, away, uh, talked about some of the ways, right, that these corporations have managed to create these big profits um, at the expense of us. Um, so that, again, I said this was going to be really quick, and it was super quick. Um, again, we were in the how-to guide, uh, pages six through eight is how um, we walked through these steps. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Were there any questions, though, first before I stop here? Um, okay, so I'm not sharing, uh, but I am going to keep talking just for a couple more minutes. So if you're still hopefully in the how-to guide, we are going to, we are on page nine. Um, and this is going to take us into our breakouts um, or the scenarios that Brittany mentioned earlier. Um, so what we're going to do, this is an opportunity for y'all to learn or to apply some of the skills um, and trainings that we've been doing uh, today. Uh, so again, that's like looking through the budget, that's IDing Wall Street actors, that's like finding the police department number specifically. Um, and each of these uh, scenarios are asking uh, something a little different. Uh, so we're gonna ask that y'all take a, a minute to read through these. I'll also read them out loud. And then, um, and then when we're ready, you will click on the Zoom link um, that is the scenario that you want to participate or that you want to um, that you want to work through. And again, myself, Brittany, and Sophia will be facilitating these. So if you have questions um, and challenges, we'll be there to walk through them with you. So uh, the first scenario, scenario one: Community members in city of, in the city of Miami want to defund their police and fully fund their public services. They've decided to push the city council to slash the city budget in half and state officials to increase state taxes on corporations who aren't paying their fair share. How much is Miami spending on police for fiscal year 20? And what percent of the general fund is spent on policing? Who are the top two corporate leaders receiving tax subsidies in the state of Florida? And uh, I will be working with y'all through that first scenario. For scenario two, uh, cities in Texas are tired of how corporate friendly the state is, mm. but communities are in much need of an investment. Community members are develop developing a pay your fair share campaign, but need some help. How much money is in often is often spending on public services through the general fund in 2019? And how much money did Texas give away in subsidies in between? And uh, Brittany will be working with y'all on that one. And then the last scenario, um, Illinois grassroots organizations are continuously pit against each other when fighting for community-based ba reparations at both the city and state level. They don't want to fight for problems, they want to grow the pot. And they've decided to do some research before sitting down to develop demand. Who are the top five subsidy recipients in Illinois and who are the Wall Street backers? And Sophia will be working with y'all through that. Um, also, just a note, there is, uh, I would say, help um, or another how-to guide just below these scenarios starting on page 10. We encourage y'all to work through the scenarios yourself, you know, and then use that as a way to check your answers afterwards. Um, and with that, if there's no questions on this activity right now, um, 